that point of over three hours, over four hours, and what happens? What I call the long ride effect. You see, this is the part where science really makes you smarter. Have you ever spent half of your ride squinting at your heart rate monitor, wondering if it's broken or whether it's just you that's broken? Look, don't worry. You're not alone. Too many older riders, they treat heart rate like it's the gospel, when really, it's more like that annoying bloody cousin that turns up at weddings and the occasional birthday party, but you're never inviting them round for Sunday dinner. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to train smarter in zone two by using what I call a simple bulletproof trilogy metric flow. Three things, power, RPE, heart rate. And even if you haven't got power, doesn't matter. I'll still show you how to use a metric flow that works. And I'll also explain what happens to your body after three hours or more on the bike and why seeing a drop in heart rate and a drop in power is not a sign of failure, it's actually a signal you're doing it bloody right. Okay, part one, I wanna talk about the heart rate and I wanna define it as that overhyped cousin. Okay, here's the truth bomb. Your heart rate is reactive, not proactive. It's influenced by temperature, caffeine, fatigue, sleep, excitement, hey, what about the last time you were looking for a clean pair of bib shorts before you went out on the ride? Or 10 minutes before your club ride? Shit, it's my wedding anniversary. Yeah, heart rate shoots up. You see, especially for older riders, your heart rate becomes less predictable than your shitty memory for names. What is that cousin called? <laughs> You know, like the autonomic nervous system, it changes with age. Your max heart rate naturally declines, but this is not a sign that fitness is going. It's just a sign that the heart rate's flattening out. The curve flattens out. So don't get confused. Heart rate is useful, of course it is, but it's not in charge. It's not the boss. It's just a little relative. Okay, in, in part two or step two, I wanna talk about the power in RPE being your zone two anchors. Okay, so what I mean by this is how you train. It's easy, you start with power and you dial in RPE. If you haven't got power, you dial in RPE as your first point. And then you glance at heart rate as a reference, not a rule book. So how to anchor mid zone two power, okay? What I mean by that is, let's say your zone two range is 160 to 200 watts. You aim for the middle. So that's around 180 watts. You don't chase the top end of that range. That's just your ego and liker trying to prove something. Consistency beats intensity in zone two all the time. Now point two is that reference of RPE. You give yourself grace. Once you've dialed in and you're into steady pedaling, you should feel your body. That's your RPE, your rate of perceived exertion. You want to be a four or five out of 10. Yes, that low, but you're starting to breathe. You know, you're aware of it, but you can talk. You just can't sing. Your legs are working, but they're not plotting revenge. Now here's the most important part. The most important part, because most riders miss this. When you go over that three hour point, four hour point, it's perfectly normal and actually smart that you let your power drift back into upper zone one or lower zone two. This is not weakness, this is wisdom, okay? Because your body's burning through glycogen, it's losing plasma volume, and it's gradually fatiguing those slow twitch type one fibers. The very ones that give you the endurance, okay? You start to use fast twitch type two fibers, which are less efficient on the endurance rides, and they create more fatigue. So what felt like a four out of 10, an hour ago, it's now a seven out of 10. This is a clear sign to back off. Back off the gas, stay aerobic. But, and this is huge, just because you're fatiguing your type one fibers doesn't mean that you're breaking down. No, you're pushing those endurance fibers to their limit. And you're telling your body, hey, we need more of these guys. So during the recovery, your body responds by increasing the pool of recruitable type one fibers, more mitochondria, more capillaries, more efficiency, more speed. You don't just recover, you upgrade. This is the beauty of consistent zone two work. It's not flashy, yeah, but it builds a bulletproof engine. One long ride at a time. I wanna talk about that longer ride because you're doing them, aren't you? That point of over three hours, over four hours, and what happens? What I call the long ride effect. This is the part where science really makes you smarter. Okay, so if you ride for over four hours, for example, it isn't just a test on your legs, it's a masterclass 
in your physiology. So here's what happens in summary after that mark. Your plasma volume drops. That's got nothing to do with the TV screen, okay? Your plasma volume drops, lower blood volume, decrease in stroke volume. That's the blood being ejected per beat. Okay, so to maintain this cardiac output, the blood pumped in one minute, your heart rate should rise, surely. But sometimes it drops. Why? Because there is glycogen depletion, glucose stored in your body's glycogen. Less. Okay, your central nervous system has got fatigue. Yeah, electrolyte imbalance, postural hypertension. Yeah, there's a drop in bloody blood pressure when you're changing position. This can occur because of the fatigue. This leads to a sensation of, I'm still riding steady, but my heart rate is falling. What's wrong with me? Look, your muscle fiber recruitment shifts. I've told you, as your type one fibers fatigue, your body recruits type two fibers, okay? Which are less efficient because they produce more lactate and more hydrogen. This is why RPE can climb, even if power and heart rate stay stable at the drop. You're not getting worse, you're learning how to go longer. Every long ride teaches you and teaches your mitochondria to go the distance, so it's okay to see those metrics change at the end of a long ride. Let me ask you this, that many people don't make comparisons. What are you thinking like during the day from the minute you wake up, go all the way through your day and you get to night? Are you the same motivated, energetic person at every stage of the day? Like shit you are. It's the same on the bike. You go through different phases on the bike, but as we're exercising longer and longer, it is natural to hit breaking points, okay? Dial into the middle of your power. It is an anchor point. If you haven't got power, steady riding with an RPE of four to five. If you are using power, you use the RPE as a secondary anchor point. The third supporting point is your heart rate. Understand where your range is, but use it as a reference point. But if there is undulating terrain and it's beaten down with sun, you know, like 15 degrees in Scotland, it's gonna be warm, isn't it? Use that knowledge, okay? But understand about what's happening in the longer rides. Even when you're eating, there is glycogen depletion. You're never gonna match what you're putting out with what's coming in because your absorption of food decreases. Yes, decreases. Keep your hydration high. That's more important. And just enjoy the bloody bike. As I said, zone two is not flashy, okay? It's not gonna give you all the greatest speeds out there on those long rides, but you stick with it, you're gonna be a superstar. As you recover, you're gonna upgrade every fucking system in your body. Then we'll see who's flashy. Hey, zone two may seem confusing, but it's not, and you know that. If you want a little bit more help, I've got a 30 minute presentation that I've shared with my Bulletproof riders it's really effective. It gives you an insight and a little bit longer with me to understand the science and practical nature of it. Hey, I'll even throw in eight weeks of free training. Yeah, and show you how to test yourself and get multiple metrics from that test. There's a link floating about or in the description. If you fancy it, go and check it out. Oh, <laughs> your plasma. Oh, there's a lot of science going on in your plasma. I won't confuse you. Think of it as a transport system. Aye, like getting in a car or a train or a plane or a bike or a tractor like me. But the thing is, this transport system, because it's mostly water. Oh, but you're no drinking water, are you? Because you're a big tough fanny. No water for me, no food for me. But as the volume decreases, so does the transport system. And your plasma is also controlling that osmotic pressure. And all these things are dropping. And you think it's your fitness. But it's just because you're not keeping the volume up. Oh, you've got to do that. And also, what is this nonsense about plasma TV screens? It's got nothing to do with the plasma in your system. And anyway, are you one of the young big fannies that has a huge big TV screen? Oh, do you know what they say about men like that? The bigger the TV screen, the smaller their... Yes, what the coach was trying to say there was the size of your sprocket. If you want a little bit more from me, hey, I've got a video floating about the screen where I help a client of mine, yeah. Not only just discover the power of zone two, but a lot more. Watch his wife's face when he says about how many bikes he's got. It's floating about somewhere on the screen, okay? I'm here multiple times per week, sharing over 30 years 
of coaching and bike fit experience. You take care. I'll see you soon.